Well, the weekend is over. We're in the middle of getting four inches of snow outside in Michigan, and the Lions lost to the Bears yesterday. If Monday is hitting you especially hard this week, I get it. Hopefully, we can have a fun time together here on today's edition of Tory's Take Live, presented by Priority Health. I'm Tori Petri. Unfortunately, there aren't a lot of cheery things to discuss in regards to the Lions today. First off, it was odd to see Matthew Stafford on the field in a hoodie when everyone else around him was in uniform. But he stayed involved. He was wearing a headset and talking with coaches and teammates during the game. I stood on the sidelines in the fourth quarter and watched him interact with the coaches as Jeff Driscoll ran the offense, trying to come from behind, and it just felt bizarre. He looked anxious, but can you blame him? Not having the game in his hands is not what he's used to. I know you guys will ask this question in the question portion of Tory's take, but we have no word yet on how long Stafford may be out. Driscoll did a solid job of stepping up in his stead, and we saw how Darryl Bevel adapted the offense should Stafford's absence continue past this week. They focused on ball control with steady, short gains and quicker passes while allowing Driscoll to move around the pocket and use his mobility. Maybe we see more of an emphasis on Driscoll's mobility if he continues to play, and the Lions game can game plan specifically for it. And while missing Matthew Stafford was not the reason why the Lions lost to the Bears, still, it's tough to swallow considering last week's Tories take was all about how the biggest strength of this team was the passing game led by Matthew Stafford's monster arm and Pro Bowl caliber play. But the show must go on with or without him and what you hope for when you're missing your starting quarterback is for everyone else to step up and make plays and the Lions just didn't get that from the team yesterday. They let a struggling Bears offense find their groove as the defense gave up three straight touchdown drives that stretched from before to after the half. With the go-ahead score before halftime, the Bears had only had 21 yards of offense up to that point when the Lions let them put together a 10-play, 80-yard touchdown drive. The Bears seemed to settle in after that, and the Lions just couldn't find their footing. There were dropped passes, there were penalties, there were big plays given up. If I had to name just one issue, I couldn't, because there hasn't been just one problem this season. There have been many. The good news is the Lions have all the tools they need to improve, and we've seen good flashes from them in every area they've struggled in as well. Certainly having five sacks by the defense was a nice statement from a team that has at times struggled to pressure the quarterback. They just need to be able to piece together more of the good. Speaking of good, we'll show you the good stuff from around the league yesterday to cheer you up on a snowy Monday and answer your questions when we return. Don't go away. This is Mike. He runs one smart tomato farm. These are the fish he feeds that feed the tomatoes. Aquaponics farming? Smart. Like choosing priority health insurance. It's how smart people access a network that includes 97% of primary care doctors in Michigan. End zone. Caught! Oh, baby, what a catch! Oh, oh, cool. Cool. Josie is smarter than every person in every park in Michigan. Check me. Smarter than every person in the world. That's smart. Like choosing priority health insurance. Check me. It's how smart people access a network that includes 97% of primary care doctors in Michigan. Welcome back to Tory Steak Live presented by Priority Health. As promised, we are here to cheer you up on a dreary Monday. So we're going to take you around the league with our extra point segment. Cowboys fans can commiserate with Lions fans after taking an L to the Vikings on Sunday night football last night. One bright spot, though, for the Cowboys to come out of that game was this bizarre pregame routine from quarterback Dak Prescott. All right, clearly he's opening up his hips here with this drill, but when you have a move like that, you are just asking to be memed. And, of course, the Internet delivered. There was a hashtag going around last night called Dak Dances to Anything, and sure enough, you can set this to just about any song, and it's entertaining. Here are a few of my favorite ones. First of all, Whitney Houston's I Want to Dance with Somebody. This one fits perfectly with the beat. I think it is the best one that I saw out there. Well done, Dak. And then, of course, for Lions fans, we had to include this Lions fan favorite, Toto by Africa. A little bit slower than some of the other ones, but who doesn't love Toto? It's always appropriate. And finally, the best Christmas song of all time, Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas Is You. Seemed fitting considering we had our first snow of the year today and 
That in my book means it is officially time for Christmas music and since this is the best song, I included this one. And that will not be the last time that I reference Mariah Carey as the holiday season continues. Not quite as good as the Jets dance to anything that happened a few years ago, but I will still take it. All right, let's take your questions here on this segment of Tori's Take. We'll go with this first question from Josh Lou Green. He wants to know at this point, what would need to happen for you to consider this a successful year well with the Lions at three five and one right now it's really tough to call that a successful season up to this point if the Lions were to win out though they could finish the season with 10 wins so I would say that in order to call it a successful year you really just got to win out the rest of the season that's a tough thing to ask for this team who is facing the Cowboys this weekend and still has games against all three of their NFC North opponents who they have yet to beat so far this season they are 0-3 in the NFC North so certainly winning out would be a good sign but I mean at this point the Lions need to just start fixing some of their weaknesses and that includes finding a run game that includes pressuring the quarterback. They were better at that, like I mentioned, with five sacks in this last game. And then stopping the run. That's something that we've seen them struggle with all season long. And they've got Zeke, Ezekiel Elliott coming up here to Ford Field on Sunday. So they've got a challenge ahead of them. There are many things on the list of things the Lions need to do in order to end up with a successful season. And that's just the start of it. All right, this question here is from 517 Bulldog. He wants to know, how is Jelani Tavai holding up in this weather. Of course, Jelani went to school in Hawaii, so uh, this snow today is quite a departure for him. Fox Sports Detroit asked him during our summer media day if he had seen snow before, and he said no, he had not. So uh, congratulations, Jelani. We are christening you with a wonderful snowy Monday today as you return from Chicago. Uh, he is actually going to be our guest on this week's edition of Lions Game Plan. So hopefully you will hear more from Jelani later on in the week. Guys, thank you so much for joining us on this live edition of Tori's Take presented by Priority Health. We appreciate you joining us on your snowy Monday. Get home safe, drive safe, stay warm out there. From Xfinity Studio, I'm Tori Petrie.